In this video, I will provide a brief introduction to attributable risk. Let's start with our standard 2x2 two two table. In this case, we are interested in the association between smoking, our exposure, and cardiovascular disease, our outcome. To make things easier for our calculations, let's include the row and column totals. First, I will talk about the attributable risk in the exposed. Using our example, among those who smoke, how much of their risk for cardiovascular disease is attributable to smoking? The formula for attributable risk in the exposed is the incidence in the exposed minus the incidence in the unexposed. Let's take a look at the concepts behind the formula. Say we have a population of eight people. Four of them smoke and four of them do not smoke. Those that do not smoke still have risk for cardiovascular disease. Their risk is attributable to all factors besides smoking. This risk related to factors other than smoking is represented in this slide by yellow. For those who smoke, they have some risk for cardiovascular disease because they smoke. This risk is represented by purple. They also have some risk resulting from all the other factors than smoking that put their non-smokers at risk that they might be exposed to. Now say two of our smokers develop cardiovascular disease and one of our non-smokers develops cardiovascular disease. Our incidence in smokers is two out of four and our incidence in non-smokers is one out of four. When we calculate our attributable risk we take the incidence of cardiovascular disease among smokers and remove the risk that's attributable to factors other than smoking, which we estimate as the incidence of cardiovascular disease in our non-smokers. What's left over is the incidence that is attributable to smoking alone. In this case, among smokers, the incidence attributable to smoking is one out of four. In other words, of the two cases of cardiovascular disease among smokers, one of these cases was attributable to smoking, and the other was attributable to factors other than smoking. Now let's look at our 2x2 two two table. Again, our attributable risk in smokers is the incidence among smokers minus the incidence among non-smokers. The incidence in smokers is 20 divided by 100, and the incidence in non-smokers is 10 divided by 200. So our attributable risk among smokers is 15 per 100. Our total incidence of cardiovascular disease among smokers is 20 per 100. Our attributable risk tells us that 15 out of these 20 cases is attributable to smoking. Attributable risk is often presented as a percentage of the total risk in the exposed. This is calculated by simply dividing the attributable risk in the exposed by the total incidence in the exposed and multiplying by 100. In our example, the percent attributable risk in the exposed is 75%. This means that 75% of the incidence of cardiovascular disease among smokers is attributable to their smoking. In other words, based on these hypothetical numbers, if smokers did not smoke, we would expect their risk of cardiovascular disease to decrease by 75%. Now let's look at population attributable risk, or the incidence of cardiovascular disease in the population that is attributable to smoking. The formula is very similar to attributable risk in the exposed. We subtract the incidence in the unexposed from the incidence in the population. In other words, if we take a look at our population and remove the risk associated with factors other than smoking, how much risk is left over? This is the amount of risk we can attribute to smoking. Based on our 2x2 two two table, we get a population attributable risk of 5 per 100. This means that out of our total incidence of 10 per 100, 5 of those 10 cases are attributable to smoking. 
we can calculate the percentage of population risk for cardiovascular disease attributable to smoking by dividing our population attributable risk by the total incidence in the population and multiplying by 100. In other words, what percent of the incidence of cardiovascular disease in our population is attributable to smoking? In this case, we get 50%. So, 50% of our incidence of cardiovascular disease in our population is attributable to smoking. In other words, if smoking were eliminated from this population, we would expect to see a 50% reduction in cases of cardiovascular disease.